The next one is of course cascade connection with passive systems. Okay, so this is exactly what was happening here. Okay, so what I am presenting is a, just a simplified already distilled version of that. Yeah, so what did you have here? You had a nonlinear system which of course by <laughs> under several assumptions could be written as a linear combination of some nonlinearity, nonlinear drift and some outputs okay and then there was this linear system uh, which is of course you have some nice properties it is passive with respect to the output and the input v yeah and there is this feedback interconnection okay so that's exactly what is specified here uh, for a more general setting again even a non-linear setting yeah if you see now i have a system that is not controlled anymore okay I have completely removed the dependence on the second state here. There is some differences. I am just trying to highlight what the differences are from here to here. Okay. If you notice this dynamics first, you see that there is this drift term here. Right. This no longer depends on the y on the x state. Right. Here it does. It depends on the xi state. So, I have sort of removed the dependence, it is not required, I mean, but it is okay, I mean, it, we do not necessarily need to do that. You could also have considered f sub a z comma x, but again, just to keep things simple, we have taken this sort of situation, okay. So, uh, uh, of course, we will assume that uh, this system is, uh, you know, asymptotically stable, right, which is what? If y equal to 0, there exists w such that this is in fact we are actually we are only assuming stability not even asymptotic stability just less than equal to zero okay we are assuming that there exists some lyapunov like function or lyapunov function yeah in fact i should say maybe more carefully this is positive definite function yeah uh, such that partial of with respect to z f a z is ne less than equal to zero okay this is essentially the Lyapunov stability condition. Okay, so if I don't have any outputs, then you have the passive system which is actually connected with it. That's exactly what you have here. This system is passive, right? That's what we assumed with all this strictly positive real and all that. Yeah. So this system is actually interconnected with this guy. Yeah, because of this y. Yeah, this is the interconnection this y goes in here that is essentially the interconnection okay so that's what we assume that there is this passive system now not necessarily linear but non-linear okay and we are saying that this is this is interconnected to the z system how because this y gets fed back into the z system okay exactly the same setting yeah just that here you have non-linear there you have linear so the linearity here is also not required honestly speaking yeah not required so so what are we saying we are saying that the passive system output drives the z dynamics okay so what are we going to do we um, of course if you have passivity you you already have a storage function right for the system vx and such that what happens you already know that for this guy you will have v dot because that is essentially passivity for this system okay notice again that this system has no connection to this system yeah not yet of course you will introduce it via the control but as of now no obvious connection okay but we will make it an interconnection means back and forth yeah that is otherwise it remains a cascade yeah here you see this way this way there is connection both ways that's what we will do through the control okay great what are we now saying we are now saying i will construct a new system new function u which i'm going to claim is a storage function for this complete system okay a valid storage function 
let's see yeah. so what is this u it is just the w that i had from the stability of this guy and the v that i had from the passivity of the second guy okay just added the two yeah almost like backstepping yeah reminiscent of backstepping had some function for the first system then had a function for the second system added the two yeah that's it that's all i'm not going to carefully take partials right because i have to compute the u dot the total derivative what do i do i take partial of w with respect to z and then z dot which is this guy the whole thing right and then i take partial of v with respect to x and then x dot notice that uh, this doesn't have any del v del z and this doesn't have any del w del x right that should be evident because this is only a function of the x state because this is a storage function for this system this has only z states because this is a talking about asymptotic stability of this system right so no dependence of these functions so these are actually you know functions in different on different state space yeah great great now what do i know i know by stability of the first guy that this is less than equal to 0 right excellent almost ignore this i also know that this whole thing has to be less than equal to u transpose y this is the passivity assumption yeah so what do i know now i am only left with this guy right because i can ignore this this is less than equal to 0 anything less than equal to 0 i can ignore in v dot right so this is actually from equality i go to less than equal to and then i keep these two terms this is this yeah notice what happened i have a sort of feedback passivation type of situation now what will i do i will simply choose so if you see i can take y transpose common outside in both these terms so i have only this term left and this term left right so i take y transpose common and i have u from here and the transpose of sorry this guy from here okay what will i do i will simply choose my control u to get rid of this guy and introduce a new control v okay introduce a new control v what does that give me it gives me v dot is simply less than equal to y transpose v right so with this new control v and the output y that was already there this entire system is now passive right now this entire system is passive okay and as soon as you have passivity you know what to do right you can construct a v which is say minus ky and hopefully if y equal to 0 implies x equal x and z equal to 0 you are done you have a you know asymptotically stable equilibrium excellent yeah exactly what he did look at what you have what is the control exactly this del v del x times this fi same del w del z times f whatever was multiplying the y yeah the you know the lyapunov function for the first system the partial so basically lgv if you assume y as the control that's essentially what you chose yeah if you think of this as a controller then partial of w with respect to z times f or lgv has we sort of know in conventional terms yeah is exactly the uh, feedback passivation term that you had yeah exactly what he did to as you if you think of y as the control this is just lgv right and that's what he chose as your uh, feedback passivation term here and then of course a new control term okay so again he may have arrived at it differently with more assumptions or you know more complicated sounding assumptions but actually it's the same thing that we are dealing with also 
okay in fact the linearity here is also not required right as you can see we work with a nonlinear system as long as you have a passive system and the output of the passive system drives this nonlinear system yeah in this way yeah linearly of course there is a linear parameterization of course yeah cannot have y square and all otherwise this these terms cannot be combined you see that's the structural requirement yeah so if you have a passive system which is driving a nonlinear system in this particular way yeah then and this nonlinear system without the y is already stable then this entire system is also passive okay so stable system in cascade with passive system also passive okay so so or, or if you want to say it differently if a passive system is driving a stable system then entire system is also going to be passive okay so very cool result very powerful result in fact we will see a nice example of a very very of course if you also have zero state observability which none of these guarantee by the way zero state observability nobody guarantees that you have to verify for that particular output okay so uh, notice in this case zero state observability will mean that y equal to 0 implies not just x equal to 0 but also z equal to 0 okay um, but if you remember Antonio actually spoke about the zero state detectability yeah zero state detectable if y equal to 0 implies that x converges to 0 okay and in all these cases all these results zero state detectability is enough not zero state observability is not necessarily uh, required completely okay the zero state detectability is more than enough okay so this is actually rather nice that you can actually work with zero state detectability yeah please keep this in mind yeah you can even write it down in your notes but anyway it's in antonio's notes uh, which i have already posted on moodle all these ports all of these all these three are now posted on moodle yeah so anyway so so zero state detectability is enough huh? zero state observability is not required and and if you see zero state detectability is rather easy to achieve in these cases because if y is equal to zero you know that this system is anyway converging to 0 right z is going to tend to 0 as t goes to infinity right by asymptotic stability assumption so i am done this system is zero state detectable okay not necessarily zero state observable i don't know that you can't say very easily yeah but it is definitely zero state detectable and that is enough okay feedback interconnection passive systems passive passive system in cascade with a stable system also passive huh? that's what we just did okay where is it useful attitude control of spacecraft okay uh, of course i do very very uh, simple uh, setup here i don't explain anything uh, yeah i will not of course i don't have that kind of bandwidth in this course but uh, this is one of the more Im most important problems that um, um, you know space engineers work on which is the attitude control that is the orientation control of a satellite so why is the orientation control required should be pretty evident so you have uh, remote sensing satellites or you have you know navigation satellites like gps satellites they all have some kind of antennas or some instrument that has to be pointed somewhere for example in most cases in your gps type satellites uh, or even in remote sensing satellites you want the antenna pointed to a particular point in earth for example maybe in, in towards india yeah but the satellite is rotating on the orbit right it's going on the orbit evolving on the orbit if you may yeah so obviously it's if, if you do nothing if you don't go put any actuation if you don't do any attitude control the antennas are not going to remain pointed towards uh, you know a fixed point on the earth right because it is going to do this as uh, if you if you move and the antennas don't move then it's just going to start pointing towards something else right so the simple task is you have to do attitude control regularly yeah because it's revolving on an orbit right same with you know if you have uh, solar panels 
so satellites need solar panels to generate power for their equipment right other or else if they are in two years of service you can't expect to be sending a battery or anything right not a choice as of now yeah so they rely on solar power so now the solar panels also need to be pointed towards the sun so there is lot of equipment on the satellite that has to be pointed towards you know a particular point and therefore attitude control is one of the key uh, problems for space engineers okay so what is attitude control you make sure that the uh, there is a frame of course i mean I, again i don't talk too much about it but i can uh, make a small picture i guess so I'm not sure if i have a picture here no so if you have a satellite say or or, or what we just typically just say a rigid body yeah the same ideas work also for quad rotors and stuff if you want to do orientation control of a quad rotor same equation same ideas will work there is no real difference it's a rigid body as long as you think of anything as a rigid body the same equations and everything will work okay so usually you have two frames of reference one is what is called actually three but i'm going to deal with two one is called the inertial frame of reference yeah usually i'll denote it as n or uh, it is a newtonian because it's a newtonian frame of reference it is fixed to the earth and then you have what is called the b frame or the body frame of reference okay this is the frame that is actually connected to the spacecraft body rotates with the spacecraft body yeah and your aim is to uh, stabilization means that i want to align the body frame with the inertial frame in um in typical set point regulation or tracking you will have another third frame which would be say an r frame yeah or a d frame whatever however you want to denote it yeah you sort of want to align the b x b frame to the r frame yeah when i say align the frame it's the same as aligning the body because the body is connect body and the frame are moving together so if i am starting like this yeah and i want to end up like this yeah this is a b frame this is an r frame okay so these are all like standard uh you know transformations attitude or orientation transformation is a very important maneuver as you can as we have already discussed um we don't assume any uh, movement of the origin we assume that the origins are all fixed to the same point we don't consider the movement of origin because these two problems are disjoint problems you can solve them separately that is positioning the origin and then reorienting are two distinct problems so we work at work with them distinctly like in quad rotors you have translational control and rotational control okay so we do the this is the rotational control problem okay so one of the big uh, challenges is how to represent rotations so again this is not something that i can delve too deeply into Uh, in this course uh, but rotations uh, belong to what is called the typical rotation matrix uh, actually i should not have called this r let me call this say some b the typical rotation matrix between any two frames uh, common notation can be uh, you know yeah is belongs to a not a space i can't call it a space a manifold called so3 okay which is basically just the space of or again sorry the manifold of orthogonal matrices uh three three by three orthogonal matrices okay and uh, not just that actually a little bit more so yeah okay so anyway that tends to get hidden sometimes uh, so this is the space we are working with okay again i i keep saying space i apologize it's a manifold okay whenever you say space it means a vector space and it is linear by nature vector spaces are linear superposition principle applies sum of vectors is in the same space yeah to sum of two rotation matrices is not a rotation matrix okay you can't just add two rotation matrices and get another rotation matrix which is why they are not a vector space it's not a linear space it's a manifold but we unfortunately cannot cover all that the whole point is this leads to as you can see nine state variables right 
eventually the representation whatever it's in so3 or whatever with some it is it has nine variables right it's a 3 by 3 matrix right with with these constraints but still a 3 by 3 matrix you can't reduce the number of variables so it's nine variables so again engineers being engineers they like to work with less variables so initially they started off working with these euler angles yeah your pitch roll angles the problem was that there is a lot of singularity in euler angles yeah that is some you can uh, once you reach a particular configuration you can no longer represent anything beyond that yeah because there is singularity in euler angles again not going into any detail throwing words but these were the challenges so uh, aircraft folks still like euler angles because their rotations are smaller typical aircraft commercial aircraft not doing twists and you know flips right so actually the phi theta psi or the euler angles are pretty small right for any commercial plane you can imagine i mean i would not imagine anything more than 15 20 degrees ever yeah so so aircraft folks still work with euler angles uh, fighter jet folks cannot work with euler angles because they are trying to do crazy flips and stuff spacecraft guys can definitely not work with euler angles because they are definitely con uh, Uh, exploring all 360 degrees as soon as the spacecraft is ejected out of a uh, you know the launch vehicle yeah into into the orbit it's basically tumbling it's essentially like you threw something with your hand right you can't control it it's going to be just flipping and tumbling you know all over right and then if you want to stabilize so how do you even deal with the angles you have to deal with uh, parametrizations which do not have singularity so euler angles are a problem so therefore we uh, spacecraft folks move to quaternions which are four variables yeah instead of three there four all the angles were three they were four uh, and what we are looking at here is uh, basically a modification of the quaternions only these are called modified rodriguez parameters these are only three yeah they have no singularity yeah and they have i mean well wherever they have singularity is not where you are interested in operating so you are fine okay so modified rodriguez parameters is one representation of rotation matrices okay any rotation matrix can be written in terms of this row variable okay that is what the whole idea is so modified rodriguez parameters are pretty good relatively singularity free and there are only three variables okay so they are uh, all these parametrizations of rotation matrices are based on some ideas of projection so this is also based on some idea of projection okay quaternions are simply based on the idea that any rotation any rotation to initial to final configuration is not actually you don't have to think of it as three rotations it is actually one rotation about one principal axis it's called the euler's theorem actually any rotation between initial and final configuration is actually a single rotation between uh, around a particular axis which is called the principal axis and you have a principal angle about it okay so this is the euler's theorem based on the euler's theorem you have quaternions yeah um, and then you have modified rodriguez parameters which can be derived from the quaternions okay but the simple idea is all of these help you parameterize the rotation matrix so basically what i am trying to say is that this rotation matrix say between the body frame and the inertial frame can be written as a function of this row okay this 3 by 3 matrix can be written as a function of row yeah this expression is also readily available all right what are the other things orientation means i have orientation and angular velocity also so there is an angular velocity which is in r3 thank you linear space there is a control which is what the thrust typically the thrust you have a uh, thrusters are typically used in what is called attitude control or reaction control systems so these are basically uh, these are almost like jets that are firing yeah you must have seen some visualizations yeah they just fire jets to reorient the spacecraft okay so this is the thrust and uh, this is the inertia matrix j equal to j transpose positive definite inertia matrix is constant in this model okay unlike the robot model inertia matrix is constant because the inertia is written in the body frame hmm? all the equations are written in the body frame okay so 
this is also in the body frame everything is in the body frame okay so the, uh, more details on this are in a dynamics course yeah which we teach also later on at some point but remember that the model is written in the body frame therefore the inertia is actually constant yeah again for the fan if i took the frame as the one that is rotating with the fan and i wrote all my equations on that frame then inertia is a constant yeah because it because my frame is rotating with the fan therefore no change with respect to that okay so uh, so that's the idea uh, we have the kinematics equation and the dynamics equation don't ask me how this comes yeah this is not a matter of again discussion in this course just take it on face value this is the equation rho dot uh, all of these equations are derived from the equation for the rotation matrix okay and the rotation matrix uh, derivative has a very simple equation yeah this is the equation for the evolution of the rotation how rotation matrix changes it is just um actually i keep uh, writing this uh, r b n just for your convenience uh, typically we don't keep write the b and n r is usually evident from you know, what you want to work in hmm. so uh, this is how the rotation matrix evolves the derivation of this is very simple i'm not going to cover it yeah uh from this you get all these equations okay because these are just parameterizations of the rotation matrix right so once you know how the rotation matrix evolves you also know how these guys evolve okay so this is the what is called the kinematics equation the evolution of the parameters yeah or you can think in your head in terms of cartesian as angle derivative is angular velocity right connected to angular velocity so that is what it is somehow angular derivatives are connected to angular velocity yeah that is the kinematics equation and the angular velocity derivatives have some dynamic terms okay this is actually two sim very very easy this is just the newton second law right this is uh, d dt of this is what this equation is d dt of j omega is equal to u okay so when you take derivative and and so why this turns out to be like this is that remember that this vector j omega is in the body frame not in an inertial frame okay so this is a vector in the body frame yeah it's in a vector in a rotating frame if I, if on this fan rotating fan i put a vector right which is fixed with respect to the not necessarily fixed but it's whatever written with respect to the body frame the rotating frame it's a vector in the rotating frame okay so when i take the derivative of such a vector it always has two components one is the change of the vector in the frame that is j omega dot and the second piece is the inertial change yeah this is omega cross j omega yeah you would have seen this in your high school this is i think i, I don't know is use the terminology used is called transport theorem or you know you sort of uh, how you how do you take derivatives of vectors in moving frames so typically this in high school or in undergrad there is uh, i am assuming there is in physics this usually taught yeah yeah you may not remember the form this particular form but it is taught if you go back and you look at you know even your high school physics problems on newtonian mechanics you will see that you did this yeah so basically it's like how do you take derivatives of vectors in a rotating frame yeah if i give you a vector which is in a rotating frame not in a fixed frame then how do you take its derivative this is how you take its derivative you first find the derivative with respect to the rotating frame and then you are taking the derivative somehow of the frame with respect to the inertial frame that is omega cross j omega okay so that is what this is it is just newton's law written in a moving frame okay so very interesting but again not i'm uh, not delving into too much details because this is not the intent of this course yeah but that's it simple kinematics is angles derivatives related to velocity angular velocity 
dynamics is angular velocity derivative re related to you can think ac angular acceleration or control or thrust okay that's it all right